part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birdwhite, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report podcast, the only podcast that has the Krypton Report reporters. That's right, just us. And with me is James, the man of steel, the Superman of red, the man with a beard. Hmm. <laughs> with a beard. <laughs> Mom pause. I, I do. I do have a beard, yes. And then there's me, Tyler, <laughs> the man who started growing some beard, but I think I'm going to shave because I can't stand it. And then we have a special guest for a certain segment of the tonight's podcast. Go ahead and say hello, special guest. Hi, guys. My name's Solomon. I, I, I'm i like the only kid here. It, it's fine. <laughs> if I'm seven, about, about to turn eight and four months, I'm... S- it's kicking it. But before we get into this week's episode, last week, or in the last time James and I recorded, we this episode kind of is delayed a little bit because, as you can hear... I'm still getting over a cold, and this life happens. And then, of course, I had my little venture at Cincinnati Expo and things. So we do apologize that this one's a little delayed. Um, Last time James and I recorded, I posed a question about Melissa Benoist being on um, Superman and Lois. And I actually got a quote here uh, from our friend Rebecca from Supergirl Radio. So we're going to cut to it and let Rebecca talk. This is Rebecca Johnson of Supergirl Radio, and the topic of Melissa Benoist on Superman and Lois is a sensitive and complicated one. Kara has never been acknowledged on the series, which seems to be a gross oversight considering it's a family show and they are intentionally ignoring his best-known biological relative. Yet, they use elements from her mythology like X kryptonite Les Lar, and Stanhope. The one redeeming aspect of seeing Melissa Benoist as Kara slash Supergirl again is that the show could do all of the things that the CW Supergirl series neglected to do, which is honestly to tell a Supergirl story and care about her history. Being on another Earth gives the writers a chance to start from scratch to write a story that isn't tied down to the canon of the Supergirl show. And given how disappointed I was with the last few seasons, it might be refreshing to see Melissa's Kara in a new light. I could be open to seeing the Girl of Steel on Superman and Lois, but at this point, with how they have seemingly removed her from Cal's story, I would advise them to be reverent and thoughtful with how they would ever introduce her. All right. Thanks, Rebecca, for that. And if you haven't, check out Supergirl Radio. Great show for Supergirl facts. And check their back catalog. Great. Good time. Good people. All right. So we're going to do our show a little bit different today. We're going to start at the top because we've got Solo here with something. And then we're going to kind of work backwards a little bit because recently it was revealed the photos of Tyler Hecklin's new suit. And of course, the interrupt the internet erupted in arguments. So, what we decided to do because we're sick of this crap is we made a flowchart of every live action Superman suit, which we've talked about before on here. But what we did differently is we decided to rank them in numbers with the with the following criteria: bodysuit, muscle padding, the color blue, the color red, the boots, the belt. The trunks, the cape, the curl, and the crest. And then we gave it a point system out of eight. Then we added all those up. And we're going to find out what suit came out the highest. Because I'm sick of the debates and I'm sick of the fighting over people saying stupid stuff like, oh, he's still not wearing a Superman suit yet. Or it looks like a Halloween costume. Or that's not really a Superman suit because it doesn't have trunks. You know what? You're just lucky that's been a little bit because I was so fired up over people's conversation about trunks that I was livid. We was about to have our first expletive episode, but 
that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the trunks is the trunks is one is is one ridiculous hill to die on. I mean, the other it's all a subjective bit, but you know who's who likes what suit and what bits you like from the suits and everything. But like Link, you know. If he doesn't have the trunks, it's not a suit. He's not Superman. Like, like that's the late just great ridiculous. Chester Bennington said, "In the <laughs> end, it doesn't really matter." But here we go. We're just going to kind of jump into it. We're going to start. There's only one I left out, and it wasn't because it would have been like horrible, like to write. And that was David Wilson for the musical. So before anyone jumps on me and says, "Where's David Wilson?" Yeah, sorry. And if it probably wouldn't happen because nobody recognizes him, but like me, just because I'm a completionist. So we're going to start here with the 1939 World's Fair, Ray Middleton. Now, instead of going like little by little, what we'll do is we'll just give you our number sum totals. And then we'll just kind of chit chat a little bit about each one. We won't take super long with this, but what I'll go, I'll do me, Solomon and James. We'll go. So Solomon gave a total to Ray Middleton's suit, 39 points. I gave it, Tyler gave it a 23. James, what did you give Ray Middleton? Matt, 15. Uh, 15. Now Solomon, is there anything you'd like to say about Ray's outfit here? I like the boots. You like the boots? Um... A lot of people might say I'm crazy. Yeah. But. I'm sure your dad would be <laughs> among the first. I, <laughs> hey, I tell him it's okay to have his opinion. As long as he can say why, he can be different than me. I don't care. We'll talk differently. But you know what? He's entitled to his own opinion. I, I put it the booth at six. So that's what I'm using. Yeah. So, all right. So, Ray Middleton, 39, 23, 15. All right. Kirk Allen, the 1948 serials, first on film, technically, Superman. Solomon gave Kirk, 36. Daddy, me, Tyler, 27. That's right. I talk about myself in the third person. <laughs> James, what did you give Mr. Kirk? Um, Ooh, 19. I think, you know, the, I mean, Kirk's list face is the basis foundation of what's to come. And it's just starting out. And it's also harder because his is in black and white, you know? He, yeah. And I mean, it's definitely a step. Up oh, it's, from it's a world. huge step. Up from come on. All right. George. <laughs> now, George is biggest. Like to me, I will point out here with George's suit. The biggest thing to me, that's a downer. Is I don't like his cape. Um, yeah. But Solomon gave him a 52. A new 52. I gave him a 35. I okay. gave him a 30. Anything you want to sum up and say about George Solomon? Go ahead. I mean, I, I like the blue. I like the crest, you know, very traditional. It's a step like the, you know, a little bit above Kirk's, but it's the cape that I really don't like. I, I'm going to put the cape on. <coughs> I, might, I might just change something to the cape to one. All right. So move on to the next one, Solomon. The next right. one is when we start to get, it's, it's amazing how much time we just jumped from like 52 to 78. Now, I'm be right. honest, okay? This is supposedly like everyone's like, I met some people at the convention, like, yeah, the Chris Reeve, the true blue right uh, suit. And, I mean, I'll break it down a little bit. Like, okay, so Solomon gave Chris a suit 65. I gave it a 62. Now, here's my negatives. I don't like how short the cape is. And I don't like how high the boots are. Those are two big negatives for me on this suit. And sometimes the blue looks a little too sky blue. 
Um, and the belt looks really plasticky. But what what do you got for Chris? I got a sixty. Oh, Solomon and Chris. and so that so far that is the highest ranking. Somebody okay. So I need a highlighter. Do I have a highlighter in here, Solomon? Like a marker in here. Yeah, marker, but no highlighter. What do I have? Anything? Okay, I'll just take the sharpie. Okay, so Solomon, go to the next one. The next one is John Hames Newton Superboy. And you gotta respect, which are basically Chris um, no suits. Um Solomon. And what it we got the cat up in our face. Get out of here, Kate. Solomon gave fifty eight for John Newton and I gave a forty three. Um I actually gave him a sixty. It, it wasn't too far off of. Um, the it, the look boots of are Reef, a little bit different, know? and the cape's a little longer. All right, now see. All right, so the next one is Gerard's, and Gerard's. I like the blue bodysuit better, but um, Gerard's I gave a forty-five to, but <coughs> excuse me, I tried to turn away. Solomon gave a sixty-two. What'd you give it, James? Um, one second there. Okay. 48. 48. Okay. Now, I, now the thing is about Gerard's is I don't like the cape. It's more like Chris's cape. It's a little shorter, and his boots are a little higher and a little different. I don't really like the boots. All right. Next is Dean Kane's. Now, Dean's, I like the blue bodysuit. Um, but for Dean Kane, Solomon gave a 53. I gave a 39. What'd you do, James? Um, I give Dean a, um, a 45. Okay. So you, you do a 45. Okay. You're like, right well, you know, the, 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 the S is a little different, you know, the, um, the red, don't what, quite that's my... match the square belt buckle as opposed to the round <laughs> belt buckle. A couple of little negatives yeah, there, like you know the what boots I'm saying? I really don't like, and. The cape, I like that it's flowy, but it looks too flowy. It's too light. What do you think about this one, Solomon? Um, I hate boots. They're like, if I had to rank all boots, these would be like number two on the worst. Number one are still Tyler Hecklin Supergirl boots. Those are the number one worst boots. These would be number two. All right. So next, Superman Returns. The great Brandon Routh. Uh, let's see. Solomon gives it a 49. I gave it a 55. Um, I mean, I'm, I give it, I actually give it a 65. Same as Chris. Um, you know, the, the only thing that really, besides the size of the emblem and then the like maroonish red that it has, it's, it's pretty much, well, pretty we'll see, pretty my, ideal, you know, and and how heavy the cape mine is. Looks the cape's sometimes. too heavy and leathery. I don't like that's more maroon. I don't like the book, the boots being uh, the way they are, and the maroon. I like the style of the trunks. If we're gonna go trunks, I like these yeah, style very much. So I love this belt. I love the blue of the bodysuit, but I don't like the neckline. Yeah, you notice that the um, the new the new animated continuity Superman has like a, sim yeah. a similar belt. So, yeah. all right. Now moving on, we went ahead and just jumped ahead, like a little out of uh, order, but this would be Brandon Routh, Superman crisis on infinite earths. Solomon 66. James, what was yours? 
Oh, I mean, I give okay, it. A I went eighty. Like, I, yeah, and I mean, Did the one thing I didn't even put on here, I didn't think about it was later, is later the black in the symbol does change to yellow. Um, but yeah, I mean, what can I say negative about this suit? There's nothing to say negative. Uh, the boots maybe a little too like shoey, but at the same time, they look good. Honestly, it's just it just looks weird because Brandon's got such big yeah, feet. Yeah. That's about that's about it. That's the only real thing that makes him look like clumpy is just how big I, his damn I, feet I are. I also don't like the trunks because they're like like light 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 red. Yeah. And more like a little dark red. But, but I mean, look at that sixty six, seventy, and, and, and I also don't like the hair that has. I had like like silver hair. I don't well, that's know. that's the style of the Superman. It's a specific time in Superman's life. So, mm. all right, so I'm gonna take us to the next one, Man of Steel. All right, Man of Steel, uh, forty six from Solomon, forty eight from Tyler. <clears throat> um, I give it a sixty. Um, and it's mostly from this picture. I mean, there's some detractions when you look at it. I mean, the boots are, I think the boots are great, you know, um, you know, kind of minus the belt, you know, there's not really a belt there. Um, there's just that oval piece, um, just a little extra designs like the hips and the, and the cuffs, but otherwise, I mean, it's a fantastic suit. Um, I don't need the trunks. Um, I love the cape. I love Fine the cape. With how long it is. It looks amazing flying. Um, the S I've always loved the way that the S what, looks. What, um, what, what S do you prefer? Forward. The man of steel or the BVS? I, I kind of prefer the um, man of steel. I, I do too. Um, I don't know why it was necessary to add the, the Kryptonian writing in the middle of it. Um, I mean, I like the quote New and everything, action figure. but um, yeah, I mean, that's honestly it. I mean, they, and we'll get to it here momentarily. All right, so I'm going to click on the next one. Take us to BVS. So the BVS, it's hard to find a picture of him like in a full suit from that movie. There's like this picture, and then I think the one of him like walking down the hall. Um, I mean, they made it a it's a Batman movie, so I mean, it's <laughs> it's hard to find a good full body picture. Um, I so on this one, I gave it a thirty six, or Solomon gave it a thirty six. I gave it a fifty five. Um, I mean, I give it a sixty. I like it just as much as the um. Man of Seal suit. I like the blue a little better. Um, the square buckle and the what looks to be more of a belt along the side looks a Just little better. Just certain scenes, like the muscles um, look a little bit more harder than like as soft as they were, like in the Man of Steel. These look a little bit more carved out in the suit. Um, but I like the right. I like the blue. Well, I mean. The, he was bigger for he was he was much he was more he was way more muscular for right. BVS than he was for Man of Steel. I mean, except for that one the the peak shots when he um yeah. when he was shirtless. Like other than that, he was overall bigger for BVS than he was for All Man right, of Steel. So now Justice League. Because there's a difference. Um let's see. Solomon gave it a sixty. I gave it a forty six. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm right there with you, you know, the, the blue was way too bright and I don't like the, the chrome shining through the blue. Just. All right. Yeah. There's not, we don't have to discuss that too long. All right. Tyler Hecklin, Supergirl suit. I started calling it studio league. All right. So this, this is suit has the worst. Cape hookup and the worst boots of all time. Yes. I gave it Solomon gave it a forty six. I ended up giving it a fifty two. Um, I do really like the S symbol. What'd you give it? 
<laughs> um, Excuse me. I mean, it's it's just it's a forty eight. Um, you know, the the cape clips, um, the two tone blue, the boots, the belt, um, the color. The color looks really good, and the symbol looks really great. Um, All right, Tyler's first suit, the Fleischer inspired suit. Solomon gave it a fifty six. I gave it a sixty four. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, I mean, it's it's a sixty five for me. It's it's great. Um, you know, just I mean, except for the foam muscle padding, I love yeah. it. Color and all, color belt, black behind the S, the gold, the gold outline. All right. Next one, Solomon. All right. So this is the season one Superman and Lois. Uh, Solomon, 59. I give it a 57. Um, I really like the belt. And you know what? I actually do like the boots. They're like not traditional, but they work. And they look comfortable to actually wear. And I like the color blue. But we all know how the padding and stuff worked. And the, the emblem was the worst part. Yeah, I mean, it was flat. The neckline... Uh, way too high, and then the padding was just too much. His his body looked too big for think, his head. Um, um, it's just a fifty. Um, <coughs> how like cranky they are. Yeah. And then we just have a note, a point of order here, just because the season two suit is the same, but the boots change, and I really hate the boots because they look like wadded rubber molded clay like they just look really wrinkly and non-forming and plat pleathery and stuff like they're higher so the height is good but other than that it just looks cranky yeah but um so last suit take us there sketch is tyler's new season three suit solomon gives it a 66 i gave it a 70 james Um, it's a, it's a 60 for me. I really like this suit. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely digging the suit. It looks a lot better on him. It looks less Um, padded. It looks more, um, a three dimensional S the belt looks good. The cape looks great. Um, yeah, the boots look good. Um, honestly, the only thing is the uh, the painted on um, muscles. It's it's kind of like they tried to do what they did with Justice League. Yeah, it doesn't bother me because it, like it's <laughs> taking away from the padding of it, you know, and just kind of giving us more of like a a little bit more definition. Like it's trying to show definition. But I get what you're saying, like the way they did Justice right. League. All right, so that's our our discussion there, and um, and the winner is the winner is. You ready, Solomon, to announce it? You want to announce it? Yeah. Tell everyone who's the winner. Random. Talking Brand, to. Random life crisis. Crisis Earth. So Brandon Routh Kryphus on Edited on Infinite Earth Kingdom Come suit is the best live action Superman suit. There, we have settled the debate with a point system. You can all join in and rank it on the criteria. All right, thank you, Solomon. All right, Solomon, you want to hang out and talk a little news with us before you have to go to bed? You ready? Yeah. So, now we're going to go over to news. Here we go. Bat Wheels was on. That was pretty awesome. James, have you had a chance to watch it yet? Uh, Most of it. Most of it. Um, Like, literally to, like, a few minutes. Ten minutes from the end. 
So, I mean, I thought it was really cute. Um, it, it was really cute. It was funny. Um, it is definitely designed for a younger audience. Yeah. Um, I, I, was kind of busy so it was easy to lose my attention because i had stuff going on but um the kids really um enjoyed it Me too. the little ones good and the four and the six year old <laughs> the next thing is star girl season three have you been watching yes I have not. Well, we can't say anything, but me and Solomon have been watching together, haven't we, buddy? Feel free. Feel free. Don't let and me ruin it for you. We've enjoyed it, haven't we, Solomon? Yep. And it's been a murder mystery. And that's what's cool about it. Like, they've really... I like the way they've done it with, like, the frenemies. And they've kept the murder mystery angle. So, Solomon and I have really been looking forward to watching it together each week. Um, but I encourage everyone to watch, retweet everything because we want them to renew Star Girl. We should probably be hearing soon about if it gets renewed or not. Well, I am going to have to jump in on it and and watch some because I've really enjoyed Star Girl. I've seen season one and season two, and they are really great. Um, and I did see a um some fight choreography from. Uh, a oh, Sportsmaster yeah. and Tigress going on, and it it looked pretty awesome. Looked pretty good, you know. Which is saying something because I mean, the only show that 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 looked good when yes. it came to that was speaking Arrow. Of, speaking of Arrow, <laughs> the Arrowverse turns ten, you know, and it's still technically going until all these DC shows wrap up. For that, anyone says Crisis tied it all together. So, 10 years of the Arrowverse. It is sweet. It's also a crazy thing about it was only three years in when Solomon was born. (laughs) (laughs) He just gave me the big eyes. And then here's something that Solomon got excited about. Solomon, do you want to tell everyone what's on HBO Max now? Super Pets. Say it loud and proud in the mic. Super Pets. Yeah, Super Pets is now on HBO Max. And what's interesting with that is you can't buy it digitally now. But they took it down from the digital retailers. So I'm wondering when they re-release it next month on home video, if they'll release the uh, back on digital retailers. Oh, interesting. So is it all renewed? Pretty much, buddy. It's time for Solomon to head to bed. So say everybody, tell everybody. You're off. Good night. Bye, everybody. See you, Solo. I hope you, ha- I hope you guys have a great morning. I know I have to do computers, so there you go. Hey, you gotta get your rest. You get up and gotta save Metropolis in the morning, pal. Yep. All right. And All right. that's Solomon signing off, everybody. In other, in other sad news, it keeps talking fading. Um, away. <laughs> the Flash season nine has officially started filming. Grant Gustin posted a heartwarming, sad video. Well, not video, but like post of just standing there and his um, kind of what the it's meant to him and what it means. So it has. Yeah, I saw a post of him saying it was. Uh... Last time he was gonna last last season he'd be putting on the suit. And I mean, I love the Flash show. Like I love him as the Flash. I know the show has had its problems and struggled here and there, but um probably more than any other show than Superman and Lois for the longest time. Like when that show came out, just how much it meant to me and how much I was in love with it and over head over heels for it and just what it meant to me at the time in my life and everything. Um, so the flash definitely holds a special place and I mean, go back and watch that first season. It is still an amazing season. 
first two seasons, actually. Yeah, um, Jamie was rewatching some of, or well, actually, for her first watching, um, and and I actually <laughs> spoiled something about Thawne reverse Dang it, flash James. for her, not realizing she hadn't gotten that Dang far it, yet. <laughs> I didn't know she didn't see that. I mean, it's like episode Hashtag nine. Dang it, James. <laughs> right. Let's get that one going. People will be like, Dang remember. it, Bobby. They'll be like, I don't get it, people. <laughs> Man, cat's not going to love right. stuff. I apologize for all the people who are like, what's going on? Cats, man. Hey, you got a cat bothering you? And I'm not going to say she was bothering me because she wasn't, you know, I would have stayed there. But the baby, she wants me when I got something to do. Otherwise, she yeah, doesn't want me. And she wanted me before I came here to record. They want you when, when you're busy. <laughs> Even uh, less than a year old, huh? But speaking of the Flash, we're getting a new version of an old villain. They recently announced the uh, return and recasting of Captain Boomerang. Yeah, and he looks really? like traditional Captain Boomerang. So well, that's yeah, cool. it is exciting. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to that. You know, Captain Boomerang's a cool character. He was a little eh, wishy-washy when it came to his earlier appearance. Um, and it's not. I just mean like he didn't stand out. You he know didn't what I'm stand saying? Stand out like a power so, song. Above yeah. the crowd. I think every time we, I think every time we say stand out, you I love that movie, ball. man. Okay, I used to watch that blockbuster <laughs> all the time. It was one, and I still sing the songs. <laughs> just I used to. Hey, I sing along every time. I used I to see myself as Max, movie. and now I realize I'm goofy. Simple as that. Um, in other news, continuing on, this is okay. This is perplexing. Um, perplexing. Good there one. could be potentially somewhere <laughs> we're not sure a Star Girl and Titans crossover because there was like a behind the scenes photo of. Brit, how do you ever say her name? Um, who plays Star Girls, Jeff Johns, um, and Beast Boy? So, is there some Ryan Potter? Yes, yes. Ryan Potter. Um, so potential Titans and Star Girl crossover. That would be really cool. I mean, they're two totally different tones, but I could see if, like, somehow Gar were there. Gar could probably oh, fit yeah. that cool. tone uh, of Stargirl and just kind of be, like, a loosely yeah, connected Gar. crossover. Not, like, yeah, Gar the full team. Could. Um, so I'm just like, cool. And it was exciting to see that photo. It'd be awesome if it's secretly like the finale of the Flash, where he connects the new multiverse and no one knows it. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. So that is cool that we're getting that we're there. You know what I'm saying? Like if that's happening, if it's not happening. That sucks. But anyways, that's something to look forward to, I guess. You know. And let's see here. Doom Patrol is supposed to premiere in December. We know that Titans premieres in November. Titan is going to have a showing here in a couple weeks at New yeah. York Comic Con. So that's coming up uh, the first week of October. I'm really looking forward to the new season. Yes, so am I. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's, I was looking in my notes here. I'm pretty sure it's the first week of October is New York Comic Con. Um, and then we just had the celebration of the 70th anniversary of Superman, the adventures of Superman with George Reeves. So that's pretty crazy. 70 years. And, 
Well, for an 80, almost 85 yeah, year old character. I'm thinking how, you know, you got its first TV show right there. And then, <clears throat> so HBO Max has canceled its Constantine television series that it was working on. The J.J. Abrams produced Constantine series has been canceled. J.J. Abrams seems to can't produce anything for HBO right now like he was supposed to. Because J.J. sucks, I guess, now. But. But. We are getting Constantine 2 with Keanu Reeves. Yeah. And what's crazy is Jeannie um, and I have been doing our Constantine rewatch. <laughs> and we need to record because we were kind of doing our own Constantine thing for Patreon. And, okay. you know, with October coming up, it's we're doing a, a with you, a uh, commentary of the Constantine film. But now I feel like it has even more, like, gravitas to it. <laughs> and what I've realized right. is Keanu Reeves is Constantine. Matt Reeves. Matt, not Matt Reeves, Jesus. <laughs> Matt Ryan is Constantine. Because <laughs> he's the English version. And Keanu's American, so he's Constantine. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I mean, of all the movies to green light, was, was it 17 years ago? Give us that Man that of Steel 2. Give um, us this. No, you're getting Constantine <laughs> 2 with Keanu Reeves. What? Um, I mean, I'd be stoked if Rachel Weisz returned with um, it. You guys have a good day. Ladies and gentlemen, the Godfather, Solomon. He sleeps 30 feet away. The Godfather. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, I'd be stoked if Rachel Weisz came back. (laughs) But I'll be... Um, I'm going to, I'm going to check it out either way. I mean, I like the, I like the original one. Um, at that time, I didn't really know like much nobody about did. the character. Um, but I also thought it still turned out to be a, a half decent movie and just the actors in it. Um, I mean, heck it was like an early introduction yeah. to Tilda Swinton, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, um, I'm looking forward to it. I know Jania is, so that'll be cool. It'll give us something to watch together. You know, she'll be happy. She loves Constantine and Keanu. And then, let's see. Oh, yeah, there's... And you can't go wrong. There there. are light-up buckets (laughs) of popcorn coming to your local movie theater for Black Adam. And rumor has it the Black Adam tickets are supposed to go on sale the 29th. Yeah, yeah. I figured soon, they would have went when they re- released that like trailer, or when they released, you know, the one month uh, to go kind of thing. But obviously, right. not. And that's all the news that I have. So now we're gonna take a moment here, and James is gonna tell us all about Superman, son of Kal El. James? Back scratcher. Back scratcher. Back scratcher. <laughs> nope. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Son of Kal-El, number 15. <laughs> so last we last we left uh, Superman, uh, John, he was with Jay, and they had gotten into Gamora to free all the post-human people um, that Bendix is controlling and killing. And they are face to face with the former president of Gamora and uh, Jay's mother, who is now a post-human being controlled by Bendix. Um, Superman rescues and takes all of the scientists out, leaving Jay alone there with his mother and Bendix. Um, Bendix is twisted. Uh, he says, says um, uh, now you turn solid. You have caused me a lot of inconvenience, Mr. Nakamura, and Mother Dearest is ready to deal out some punishment. Uh, 
He says, if you think I'm, and then Bendix says, you have till the count of three or I blow her head off. And he just counts and starts attacking Jay. Uh, Superman gets some information on where and how they are controlling all the post-humans. It's not just Bendix. He's got a complex of people under threat of death um, being like, it's pretty crazy. Cause he's like, the bunker will collapse. If you try to uh, burrow down to it, um, Bendix teleports in yeah. and it's designed. So the people inside can't use their controlled post humans to try and free themselves either. It's messed up. Yeah. It's a, it's a pretty twisted um, villain this go around um so superman needs to teleport in so he goes to get wink and he gets her and he teleports inside um disarms the soldiers and uses heat vision and severs all the controls for everybody controlling the the post humans and they all wake up in the middle of the fight and we've got Dreamer, and she's, hey, uh, she says it's okay, it's over, as she's giving a post-human a hug, comforting him. Um, Lex tells Bendix that it's over. Uh, all of his uh, human rights violations, uh, human rights abuses, and other atrocities have been made public. Good afternoon. <laughs> right. Um, and sorry, Bendix is talking with Lex, and then his mother gets freed. She stops. Um, and he says, We're okay. And you see that Robin severed Bendix's um, device, his mind control I device it. I from love his chair. Damien in this. Yeah, I really like Damien with with John. So, I mean, it gives some hope for the new Super Sons movie that's I like coming their out. Dynamic. It's even more it's even more crazy yeah. than Bruce and Clark's. Absolutely. Um he says, uh, "Hello. I heard you've consistently tried to hurt, uh, try to hurt my best friend." He says, "Move, child," and he smacks him. He says, want me to move again? <laughs> Bendix takes off running. He's like, seriously? You're running away? And Bendix is shouting at people, someone kill him. He says, good luck with that. These uh, um, these have the look of people who are completely over you and done doing your bidding. And Bendix teleports to Skywatch. Uh, Dreamer shouts for superboy uh superboy i just watched superboy it's, it's, um, it's tough superman like, honestly it's tough because that's <laughs> the thing of john as superboy uh yeah, right <laughs> and uh dreamer shouts to superman tells him that uh she has a dream burning death death from above and bendix is on a satellite and he's Getting, he's targeting Gamora and firing an energy weapon on the uh, on the city, and John rushes in and takes the blast to the chest. Um, says, "I've never felt anything like this. I can feel it trying to burn right through me." He says, "Die, just die." Lex pops in. Kryptonians are notoriously difficult to kill. Trust me, I speak from experience. Um, and of course, you know Lex. Uh, Lex is backing him. Um, he says, uh, you almost implicated me in a very public mess. Um, he says, are you here to threaten me? Oh, no, we're well past that. You're too ambitious and too reckless. Um, he calls him a beta tester. <laughs> I will take what you built and improve on it. You were a very good beta tester. Um, then Bendix thinking... Thinking he knows uh, that he's smarter than Lex. Skywatch, internal defenses, target Luther, and and nothing. I've already taken control of this station. Sky uh, Skywatch, open airlock seven. 
and he jettisons Bendix right out yeah, into space. Yeah, it's space, Henry. I can't hear you complain. I like that line. I thought it was really good. I think Bendix gets exactly what he deserves, and I'm fine that Lex is the person who killed him. I think it's hilarious Lex is the person that killed him. Yeah. <laughs> um, so John says he feels something that he's never felt. Um, something building inside of oh, him. Man, I just figured it out. But keep going. Um, Lex, look at you, super scene, uh, super teen, so willing to sacrifice yourself to save others. I'll definitely take advantage of that in the future. Um, and he's teleports back to LexCorp and Skywatch self destructs and blows up. Uh, Superman returns to Earth with Robin. He says something weird happened to him. It's hard to describe. And then he says, we'll talk later because everybody shows up. Which is kind of annoying. (laughs) Um, Superman talking with Dreamer and some of these others. uh, What would they call themselves? The... Retaliators, I maybe. It. I can't give it. There's too many names. Something like that. Everybody has a name. Well, they they were. Yeah, they all have names. Um, uh, the revolutionaries. That might be it. They're they're the characters that uh, Taylor created during his um, Suicide Squad run. Of course they are. Yeah. Well, of course. Why not? Their own characters. That's why. Well, you know, what's really cool is if you at least follow Tom Taylor's work, uh, his his continuity work, like, at least, like, like yeah, his yeah. stuff fits together. You know? So, that's good storytelling. Um, John is introduced to Jay's mother, and all the cameras, everybody's watching. Jay does not have his mask on. I don't care. You're not hiding. You're out there for the world. The least I can do is be beside you. And it looks like Jay and John are caught kissing on camera around the world, and everybody knows. Everybody knows. Scotty. Scotty doesn't know. know. (laughs) But Scotty doesn't know. But Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. (laughs) <laughs> that's the song Jania put that together I need you to play that for me <laughs> um, yeah it was a good you know it's a 15 issue kind of story run and that's that's the only comic I had for this week I, didn't, I haven't had a chance to read anything else yeah what else do you got oh no uh, world's finest. That came um, out number seven. Last week, and right? Deceased. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to. Last I think week's so. Or I, I didn't get a chance to hit the shop, um, pick that up, or my uh, uh, one bad day, two face. So we'll have to save those. And then, mm, yeah, I, I saw that one coming out. I knew you would be. You said you'd. And then you next week, the one. second of that Superman space comes out, and don't worry, dear listeners, we're going to do a whole episode about the that new Superman space um, thing. So. Yeah. Which I haven't read. I kind of think I'm just going to say, so, and I'm going to read all three of them. I just, and then we'll, that's kind of what I was thinking because I read the first one thing. and I liked it, but I don't remember all of it. Well, it's like what? It's every supposed to be, I months. thought every month, but I guess it is. I don't know. But whenever we do it, we're just, I'm going to sit and reread all of it. So, all right, James, you said you watched some Superboy. So take. I did. I watched uh, episode thirteen, Super mm-hmm. Menace. Let me pull up my notes on that one uh, here. Dun, 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 dun. Well, uh, let, let's see. In this, in a quick overview, of this episode. I mean, we get we get Superboy exposed to red kryptonite. We get Metallo returning. Yeah, we do. And what's funny is, I just want to give a shout out to you. Um, Anthony over at Digging for Kryptonite just did a discussion, and his guest was like, "Yeah, man, this is only they're talking about um, 
during the course of the conversation, Brian Austin Green's um, Metallo was brought up, and the guy was like, uh, "Yeah, I mean, it's the only live action Metallo." And Anthony's like, and he goes, "I think oh, they yeah. did it on Superboy." And the guy's like, "Really?" And then I'm like sitting yeah. like, "They also did it on Supergirl." They gave us two different Metallos on Supergirl. And then I think they did some sort of yeah. kind of thing on Lois and Clark. They So, yep. yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was kind of funny because Superboy did give us a, I think they done a Metallo. So what do you few. think of this Metallo? The only one that had a Metallo <laughs> return. <laughs> what do you think of this uh, Metal Zero Metallo? Mahalo. Oh, um... I mean, the the suit was just as bad as last it, time. It, it looks maybe. like you ran out in your garage, <laughs> fell into some tubing and stuff, and then just like put it on. And <laughs> it looks like they added a whole bunch of stuff, like tubing and wires and like tape and and lights and stuff to like. It hockey reminds pads. me of like a Power Rangers villain, but you know what? I will say this. It still looks better than Gotham's Bane. Oh my goodness! Solomon and I just did a tier um, linking of every live-action Batman villain we found on Tier Ranker, and he wanted to do it, and we sat and we did it, and it got to Bane, and I was like, "Drop that in the F category for F," <laughs> because that was some Dookie. We also we we had a Dookie category, and it was lower than Dookie. That's how bad it was. Like, <laughs> Shane West as Eduardo. Like, you're not even Hispanic, man. Like, anyways, I digress. But continue, Superboy. Uh, yeah, so Superboy is... Superboy is invited to a military experiment where they're trying to get rid of the harmful kryptonite radiation rays dangerous to Superboy and harness the energy from its radiation uh, as a power source. And they seem to heat it up and inadvertently turn it to red kryptonite. That's the sequel to the three doors um, down when they get back together. Because they need, they're gonna make red kryptonite. Yeah, <laughs> yeah red they're kryptonite. Gonna, they're gonna like, tweak <laughs> kryptonite, make a little, make it a little harder and edgier and a little bit more like of the now, and they'll just yell red kryptonite in it. Um, yeah. So they like inadvertently they they change the color of it, and it no longer has the radiation. Um, Superboy. And the general go into the room. He touches the red kryptonite, and then Superboy gets very moody. Yeah. <laughs> um, he crushes the general's hand, uh, blasts a hole in the wall, and then next thing you see is Super Menace on the front of the Daily Planet. I mean, we all have bad days, you know what I'm saying? But Superboy's not allowed <laughs> to have a bad day. Right. So, no, things can go pretty bad when when uh, you have those kind of powers and you have a bad day. But they the government uh, frees Metallo, gives him kryptonite, so that way he can um, take down Superboy. They want him alive, but of course he's he wants Actually. to kill Superboy. So he incapacitates Superboy, and then they... Then the government saves Superboy, and Superboy takes off, um, and then he goes to join forces with Metallo, um, and somehow, some way, a second dose of red kryptonite, because he tricks Metallo into absorbing the kryptonite, like coming to new, some new kryptonite, and then, and then he uses the ray to. Um, negate the kryptonite that is powering Metallo. And he turns them both red. And then somehow a second dose of red kryptonite cures Superboy. 
Yeah, I'm not sure how that works. And we get, yeah. And then we get, so there was a couple of things in this episode that reminded me of like the first episode of Red Kryptonite mm-hmm. on Smallville. Like um, he took Lana to a bar with him. Um, uh, you know, I think the uh, the heat changing the kryptonite. I mean, I think that happened to. I think it turned it to black kryptonite in Smallville, but still. Um, I mean, they artificially created red kryptonite mm-hmm. in Supergirl. So, how do you prefer? Do you prefer so, red kryptonite to be kryptonium based, or to be like the artificial man made version? I I like the idea that the um that it's kryptonian based that uh different minerals that were irradiated at the explosion of the planet um those minerals became your different colors okay. of kryptonite. You know, so they had different effects. So, you know, say like on earth, you know, like certain metals certain ore, certain stones would be irradiated to have different effects. Same thing with the pieces okay. of Krypton. Yeah, yeah. You it's, know? One of, it's one of those questions. It's like, hmm. That's how I always, that's how I always figured it, you know? Um, like, I've seen the artificial creation and stuff many times over, and... I mean, it's all super science anyways, so it, it you just go with it. But it was kind of a lot less believable, you know, that it would have. I mean, it, it has unknown materials in it. You can't you can't create something from you can't create something with a <coughs> unknown material and a material that doesn't exist on Earth. Speaking of that. There was a meteorite that was just found that had like a diamond in it from space. So they're trying to, it's denser. They're trying to replicate it here on Earth. Yeah, that's actual news. Interesting. People. I mean, a combination of certain things, I, I guess, you know, you could come close to something like that. An that's unknown thing, but still, you don't know. Yeah, be, you still don't know the composition. And I don't know, the artificial thing just seemed a little... As, as I guess as as far fetched as everything else, but yep. <laughs> no, I I I definitely always preferred like they were from Krypton, you know. That's the way I had always viewed it. Is and, and I guess it, like I said, ge 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 uh, geology like you know different minerals, different stones and gems and all that stuff. Metals would become different colors of kryptonite during their during the point where they were ra- radiated when the planet exploded. Cool. And IMDb gives this one a 7.5. So, good episode. Good episode. Are you enjoying your Superboy viewing? Um, I am, you know, I am enjoying it. It's few and far between, but I think honestly that's better because I will pay more attention to each episode because the longer I go on, the more episodes I watch in a row, the less I end yeah, up paying attention. I, uh, I, uh, I took a break for a <laughs> while and then I went back and I've, I'm in season three because I needed that break um, to really like pay more attention because it's it's it doesn't have the linear storytelling like now where you know, you can't really binge it in the sense of every episode connects. They're all almost standalone. Uh, very, very loose continuity. Yeah. Um, and sometimes that doesn't make for an engaging, continual watch. So, Yeah, the only continuity is if you have reoccurring characters. Other it's, than that, each one is... Because each season almost is different. self-contained in itself. As of right now, like I said... Season one to two, there's big changes. Season two to three, there's big changes. And like I said, that's where I'm at right now. It's in season three. Hmm. So, well, I'm in. I'm enjoying going a couple episodes at a time. All right, so we're gonna get a couple more on our next episode. We'll catch up with news. We'll catch up with anything else that's fun and fancy free here. James, anything you want to say to the good listeners before we head on out and you get back to being 
That sweet, um, sweet man. <laughs> he's like, I don't, I don't. <laughs> Sometimes he's you just like, make it like, awkward. Like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't either. I just yeah, said it because it sounded funny in my head, and then I said it out loud, and I was like, eh. Um, well, I do want to tell you and and the listeners, you know, uh, you should if you're not reading Deceased War of the Undead Gods, it's pretty cool. Um, issue two came out, and I read that. Um, so I'm looking. I'm. Well, James, we... that might cool. be something to talk All about right. next James, time. Get back to fighting crime, protecting the city, and remember. Look up in the sky. Yes, it's me, Sayla. We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find all of our information right there. $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. We're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, Caped Wonder, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope Podcast. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report.